Image of Israel's imminent ground invasion raised questions in the Commons today. It comes as more than 2,600 Palestinians have been confirmed dead. Labour MP Richard Burgeon called for an end to what he called Israeli war crimes. Civilian areas bombed, food, electricity, water, medicines, all cut off. Such collective punishment is a war crime under the Geneva Conventions. So will the Prime Minister take this opportunity to make clear to the Israeli government that this collective punishment of Palestinian civilians must end immediately? Well, joining me now is Politico's deputy editor, Dan Bloom. Welcome to you, Dan. Uh, give us a taste of the mood in the Commons today. You heard Burgeon speaking there. Uh, was he a lone voice? He's not a lone voice, no. Uh, you have kind of a lot of MPs on the left who have the same kind of feeling on uh, what's happening in Gaza or what is about in imminently to happen further. Uh, but you've also got some MPs like uh, Crispin Blunt and Alicia Kearns on the Conservative side kind of saying that while well, what Hamas did um, killed indiscriminately hundreds of Israeli civilians um, massacred in the most brutal way was an awful thing uh, that Israel has to obey international law in the way it responds in Gaza, which has a lot of uh, young Palestinian civilians who are nothing to do with Hamas. Um, what the line from the Prime Minister and Keir Starmer is, is that Israel must obey international humanitarian law. Uh, what they're not being quite so specific on and what they're not perhaps going quite as far as some of those backbench MPs on is exactly what that means on the ground, because then they start getting into the very difficult diplomatic question of, well, how exactly should Israel exercise that right that it has to defend itself? In terms of the front benches, uh, they, they are singing with one voice, pretty much. Would that be fair? Absolutely. Um, Keir Starmer and, and Rishi Sunak are united on this. You saw uh, David Lammy, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, and James Cleverley, the Foreign Secretary, uh, kind of having a bit of a hug on Sunday when they both arrived at Broadcast Studios to talk about this. And the reason, um, among many, is that Labour have taken the view that uh, Britain has to appear united on the world stage on this. Um, I think the difficulty for both of them uh, will start to come if that response in uh, in Gaza becomes extremely kind of hard, you know, harsher than it is now. Uh, if the people who've been told to evacuate and haven't been able to get out uh, are in hospitals and that sort of thing in northern Gaza, uh, end up coming under fire, that will obviously put uh, more pressure on Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer to harden up that line perhaps a little bit uh, on exactly what they mean by telling Israel to um, make sure it's within humanitarian law, which of course Israel insists that it already is. Indeed. And Dan, I thought there was a rather fascinating intervention from Theresa May, the former Prime Minister today. Now she's calling on the government to reflect the role of Iran in this and how much of a concern this is going to be for leaders going into the next week. It's a, it's a really crucial point and one would reasonably argue very key to what is going on at the moment. Yes, so um, it, it, one of the things the government and the US are also trying to do is talk to neighbouring uh, countries, regimes, to make sure that this doesn't escalate further and spread to other, uh, sort of have other countries involved. Um, and Iran is, was coming under particular fire in the Commons because uh, of what MPs said was the Revolutionary Guard's kind of role in uh, supporting and funding Hamas. And there were a lot of MPs, it, Theresa May didn't go quite this specific, but a lot of MPs saying that they must prescribe the Revolutionary Guard of Iran as a terrorist group, which is pretty much what the US did about four years ago and the UK hasn't done. And there was there was probably the source of one of the, the most... Uh, uh, visible levels of frustration from backbench conservatives and uh, the Lib Dem leader, Ed Davey, all of whom were saying, why haven't we done this yet? You know, uh, this is clearly a group that um, that meets the threshold. Why haven't we prescribed it? And the Home Office has a tendency not to comment on uh, doing that sort of thing before it does it. So often it can kind of come out of the blue, as it were. Um, but you can you can sense that they will come under more pressure to do that as the uh, as the days go on.